In this video, we are going to discuss an example of round robin process scheduling and we are going to take a time quantum of two time units. So here are five processes, their burst time and their arrival times are given to us. So if we see at time zero, we have only one process in the system which is P4 and it will come in the ready queue and the scheduler will give the processor to P4. So P4 will start at zero and will end at time two. So in this two time units, it has run for two. So the time that is remaining is only one. Meanwhile, at time one, P3 has arrived in the system. So P3 is there in the ready queue and P1 has also arrived at the system at time two. So P1 is also there and this P4 when it completes its execution, it will also join the ready queue. So P4 will also come in the ready queue. Now, since P3 was at the head of the ready queue, so at time two, P3 will be given the processor by the scheduler. So P3 starts running from time two to time four. So you can see that P4, only one time unit is left. And P3 finishes at time four, and at time 4, we also see that P5 has arrived in the system. So P5 will also join over here. And after completion at 4, P3 will also join. Also, since P3 has run for two time units, its remaining time will be 6. So since P1 was at the head of the queue now, P1 is given the processor and P1 will run from 4 to 6. So P1 runs for two time units. So the remaining time over here would be 4. And in the meantime, P2 has also arrived in the system. So P2 will also join the ready queue and P1 after finishing will also join the ready queue. Now the system at the head of the queue is P4. So P4 will be given the processor next. So P4 will run for from 6 to 7 only because only one time unit was left. So P4 is running and P4 will run for one time unit. It will finish its burst time and now it will be out of the system. So P4 will go out and now this process P5 which is at the head of the ready queue will now be given the processor. So we see that P4 is out of the system and P5 starts running. So it will run from for two time units again will run for 7 to 9 and it will complete two more time units over here and now this process P3 is there at the head of the queue and P5 will join the ready queue. So P3 is scheduled from 9 to 11 so P3 will have a remaining time of 4 and now the processor will give the process, uh, the processor, the scheduler will give the processor to P2 and P3 will come at the tail of the ready queue. So P2 starts running, it will run from 11 to 13. P2 is now going to complete its burst time and now this will also be out of the system. What we are left now is with P1, P5 and P3. So now the next would be the processor being given to P1. So P1 will run from 13 to 15 and the remaining time would be 2 now and after running it will join the ready queue over here and now the processor will be given to P5. P5 will run from 15 to 17 and it will completes, complete its burst time and now will be out of the system and now after P5 the processor will be given to P3. So P3 will run from 17 to 19 and now only two time units are left. Now after P3, P1 will be given the processor and P3 will come join the ready queue. Now P1 runs for two time units from 19 to 21. It will complete its burst time and will be out of the system. Now we have only one process left in the ready queue which is P3. So P3 will uh, run for from 21 to 23 and then it will also complete its burst time. 
So if we see, look at the Gantt chart, this is how the processes have run over the time units. And if we look at the waiting time, P1 arrived in the system at time 2, but it was given the processor at time 4. So 4 minus 2 was the waiting time. Then it was given the processor next at 13. So 13 minus 6, again this was the wait time for P1. And then after that, it was given the processor at 19. So 15 to 19 also was the wait time. So the total wait time was 13. P2 came in the system at 5 and it got the processor at 11 time units. So 11 to 5 was its wait time and it completed its two time units of burst time in this, uh, in this execution phase only. Similarly, we can compute the wait times for all the other processes. And if we compute the average waiting time, we will add all of the waiting times of the processes and divide by the number of processes. So we get the waiting time as 9.2. If we compute the turnaround time, P1 completed its burst time at 21 and its arrival time was 2. So its turnaround time is 21 minus 2, which is 19. P2 completed its burst time at 13 and its arrival was 5. So 13 minus 5 is the turnaround time for P2. P3 completed at 23 and it had arrived at the system at 1. So 23 minus 1 is 22. If we compute the average turnaround time, we will take the total again and divide it by the number of processes. So this gives us 13.8. So this was an example of round robin process scheduling and this you can take for other time quantum as well.